In our previous video, we learned to find the least squares regression line for a collection of data points. Now a line might not always be a best representation of your data. So in this video, we'll look at some other models that we can make. So if I have a collection of data points x1, y1 through xn, yn, and it doesn't seem to fit a linear model, what we can try to do is find some other relationship between x and y. So let's consider the following sample of data points. If we look at this data, it seems to go up and then go back down. So a linear model would not be a good fit for this. Instead, there might be a quadratic relation between the x's and y's. So maybe we can try to fit a quadratic to this. So a parabola like this might be the best fit. For each of the x values on our data set, we have a corresponding point on the parabola. Just like in the linear model, what we can do is look at the residuals. Residuals are the distances between the actual data point and the corresponding point on the parabola. If we want to find a least squares quadratic regression, all we have to do is minimize the sum of the squares of these residuals. So note that our quadratic can be defined by the equation y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x plus beta 2 times x squared. Ideally, we want the quadratic to fit our data points perfectly, which means that there are no residuals. If that were the case, then for each x value, the corresponding y value on the parabola would equal the actual y value of the data point. For our first data point, we have the x value x1. So the corresponding point on the parabola would be beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x1 squared. Now we want that to equal the actual y value of the data point, which is y1. Now we can do this for every data point, so in the end I'm going to have beta 0 plus beta 1 times xn plus beta 2 times xn squared equals yn. This system of equations can be rewritten in matrix form. We can write it as the matrix 1, x1, x1 squared, 1, x2, x2 squared, and so forth. So in the end, we'll have 1, xn, xn squared, times the vector beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, equals y1, y2, all the way to yn. As you can see, the matrix equation that we have here is very similar to the linear model. Again, we'll call this matrix x, and it's our design matrix. We'll call the vector beta, and that's our parameter vector, and then this vector y, which is our observation vector. So typically, your data set won't be a perfect parabola, so the system x times beta equals y is often inconsistent. The next best thing that we can do is to find the least square solution to the system. And to find the least square solution, we would solve the normal equation x transpose times x times beta equals x transpose times y. Now we can use this idea and model any polynomial relationship between x and y. For example, let's say I know that x and y have a cubic relationship. Then my design matrix would be of the form 1, x1, x1 squared, x1 cubed, 1, x2, x2 squared, x2 cubed, and so forth, all the way down to 1, xn, xn squared, xn cubed, times beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, equals our observation vector y1, y2, through yn. So this would be my equation, x times beta equals y, but then to find the least square solution, I would do x transpose x times beta equals x transpose y. I want to point out that a matrix of this form is called a Vandermonde matrix. So let's now look at an example. So in this example, we're asked to find the quadratic that best fits the data points 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 6, and 3, 5. We want to find the least square solution to x times beta equals y. In this problem, our design matrix would be 1, x1, x1 squared, and so forth, 
1 xn xn squared, which is 1 0 0 squared, 1 1 1 squared, 1 2 2 squared, which is 4, and then 1 3 3 squared, which is 9. Next, our parameter vector is beta 0, beta 1, beta 2. And our observation vector is 1, 4, 6, 5. So to find the least square solution, we want to solve x transpose x times beta equals x transpose y. So that's the matrix 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 4, 9 times 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 9 times beta, that's beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 equals x transpose, that's 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 4, 9 times the vector 1, 4, 6, 5. Multiplying things out, we get 4, 6, 14, 6, 14, 36, 14, 36, 98 times beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 equals 16, 31, 73. Next, you would form the augmented matrix 4, 6, 14, 16, 6, 14, 36, 31, 14, 36, 98, 73, and row reduce it. I won't go through the details, but you should get 1, 0, 0, 9 tenths, 0, 1, 0, 22 fifths, 0, 0, 1, negative 1. So we find that beta 0 is 9 tenths, or 0 0.9, Beta 1 is 22 fifths, or 4.4, and lastly, beta 2 is negative 1. So your quadratic, which is y equals beta 0 plus beta 1x plus beta 2x squared, is given by y equals 0 0.9 plus 4.4x minus x squared. That is the quadratic that best fits your data. We can also take this idea and look at regressions in higher dimensions. Suppose now that we have three variables, one of which is dependent on the other two. We can plot data points x1, y1, z1 through xn, yn, zn and try to fit a surface to the data. For example, we might try to fit a plane to the data. So we may define the equation of the plane to be z equals beta 0 plus beta 1x plus beta 2y. Following the same idea as before, ideally we would have that for each pair x, y, the corresponding point on the plane matches up exactly with the data point. So this would give me a system of equations. For example, I would have b0 plus b1x1 plus b2y1 equals z1 and so forth, b0 plus b1xn plus b2xn equals zn. This system of equations can be written in matrix form. We would have the matrix 1x1, y1, 1x2, y2, and so forth, 1xn, yn, times the vector beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, equal to our observation vector z1, z2, all the way through to zn. So again, we have our design matrix x, we have our parameter vector beta, and we have our observation vector, this time we'll call z. Typically, our data points won't all be on a plane, so this system is usually inconsistent. But what we can do is find a least square solution to this by solving x transpose x times beta equals x transpose z. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching.